Hello, I'm Bob the Booker and welcome to my channel. Um, today I just wanted to do a review of the books that I read this week. Um, and it's largely been dominated, as you will see, by uh, the International Booker Prize, which has sort of <laughs> taken up a few of these. And uh, if you're sort of wondering how I sort of flip all of these big chunkers into one week, I didn't, because uh, this was sort of finishing off the last sort of hundred or so pages um, of, of these of these books. But um, yeah, let's get started with sort of going through some of the books I read uh, this this week. And I. A few of them I won't go into too much detail because I'll be talking about them separately. Separately, So I'll start um, a little bit with the International Booker ones just to quickly get those out of the way. Um, Tomb of Sand, I absolutely adored. I did a separate video on this where I go into a bit more detail about all the reasons I love it. Um, it's set in, um, well, it's, it's set in India, but particularly looking at uh, the partition. Uh, where sort of land was split up and where sort of people suddenly found themselves either in India or Pakistan, depending on where they were before. And essentially, you know, a new nation being created pretty much out of, you know, in, in one fell swoop was sort of a bit of a dramatic moment. Um, and to, to put it lightly, um, and so this book really charts actually what this this sort of sort of central figure, this this um, this woman at the heart of this family, how she sort of has been really badly affected by uh, by this, um, you know, her sort of her memories of the, of the past, her attempt later in the book to try and bridge that gap and kind of revisit her history and, and sort of complications that come up with it. Um, so I thought this was really, really beautiful. Uh, translated by, I don't even think I said who it was by, Tumor Sand by Gitanjali Shri, translated by Daisy Rockwell. Um, fantastic, fantastic book. Um, I think an early contender for one of my favourites of the year. Um, so brilliantly translated because the whole book is so sort of full of these turns of phrase and this sort of playfulness with language that I adored. Um, so yeah, I, I really, really loved this, um, as you may be able to tell. Coming on to another chunker, unfortunately I was less uh, lucky perhaps with the Books of Jacob and all 900 pages of its of its glory. Um, I Again, there's a separate video out on this um, where I'll talk in a bit more detail, but essentially a large part of this I realised was a kind of me problem and not the books problem per se. Um, I'm not very well suited to big long historical books with lots of characters. I'm not that clever. <laughs> and I often just get lost and I have no idea what was happening as evidenced by the fact that at one point I was talking to somebody about this book um, I think it was the wonderful Larry has opinions actually and I referred to the book as being set in the medieval times and then afterwards was like no that's not right is it looked at the book when I got home and was like yes the, the first line of this blurb in the mid 18th century I'm like yeah I mean there's your problem right there Bob <laughs> like, um, so yeah there's a there's a passage at the beginning of this book that talks about readers who read books and are like sieves uh, and kind of get all the important information and some who basically just bleed out all information and don't understand anything. I think I fall into that later camp, unfortunately, with this book. Overall, it's one of those things, it's really sort of frustrating because I can see that this is a really good book. I can see it's really well written, really well researched. It's just not a me kind of thing. And I think it, I also just didn't I think when I got lost, I think I just sort of was like, I'll carry on, it'll be fine, it'll all be revealed. Whereas I think I needed to step back, do a bit of research or like, you know, go back 20, 30 pages and, and sort of do whatever. But um, unfortunately, I think I just ploughed on because of its size and, and sort of struggled. Um, but I still see a lot of value in this book. I just don't think it's necessarily fully a me thing, but I have enjoyed um, Drive Your Plough Over the Bones of the Dead by her and Primeval and other stories also by Olga Tokarczuk. So yeah. That's that's where it's up to on that. But again, I very much recognise that as more of a me problem. I know people have loved it, and I totally get why they loved it. Like, it, I, there were so many passages of this where I was like, this is brilliant. I really like the beginning of this book. I really like the end of this book. I think I got lost in the sort of 750 pages in between, but with moments that were really gorgeous and brilliant in between. So yeah, struggled, but overall don't see it as a bad book in and of itself. I mean, that doesn't really exist as a thing. It's all subjective, but, you know, that's kind of where I'm at. Next, I've not got the rest of them here, so actually I'm going to be showing the one that I haven't read. Uh, but I, um, as part of the International Booker Prize, uh, a new name, um, part of the Septology by Jon Fosser, um, was also um, uh, shortlisted. And uh, short, it was on the shortlist, and it was shortlisted. Well done, Bob. Really doing, really doing the, the thing here. Um, but a new name is the third part of this sort of trilogy of books that kind of a, a Septology um, 
And uh, I read the first two, which I really enjoyed a lot more than I thought I would, especially given that they are um, stream of, or not stream of consciousness, that is not exactly right, but there, there's sort of no punctuate, no full stops. And so it's sort of two or 300 pages of just sort of go, go, go through the language, um, which is a bit intense, but actually it's so sort of dreamlike at times in the way it approaches things. And we, we basically, it, it kind of unfolds in the way that memory does often unfold. We're sort of following this character who I believe is, I don't know how you pronounce it, I'm assuming Asle, like A-S-L-E. Um, and uh, and we've also got the character Ales as well, which makes it a bit confusing, like A-L-E-S, very similar names. Um, and part of the idea is this, this person is a painter, but there's also a lot of looking back over history and um, we we sort of, it's that idea of how sort of personal history and memory intersects with things like these little flashbulb moments of trauma or of horrible things happening and how there are so many big things we forget, but then all these sort of small moments as well that we will remember, like the taste of something or um, the song that was on a radio when this thing was happening, um, all the sort of religious sort of overtone as well, this kind of idea of this character almost feeling like they're suffering some kind of penance all the way through. Um, but I am really enjoying this. I'm really excited to really go through um, a new name now. And I'm going to do a separate video on the septology as well, because why not? Uh, and um, yeah, really excited to, to talk a little bit more about this and finish the, the septology. Uh, but enjoying this way more than I thought I would. I, I sort of opened it and was like, oh, great. So no full stops. OK, <laughs> let's see how this goes. Um, the first book starts with the word and. And so you kind of do have that real kind of like you're in the you're in the mix of it, like and the blah, blah, blah. So it's a lot of, you know, and something says this, he says, blah, blah, blah. He says this. Who says this? Who says this? Um, so it kind of is a bit uh, sort of full of, of stuff, um, but I'm really enjoying it so far. And I will report back once I finish the third one. I also read um, a couple of books that are... Um, that I've been sort of meaning to read for a bit. One of them is a new release, um, and one is just one I kept on seeing pop up, firstly on a couple of prize lists, but also just sounded really interesting. Um, so the first is Elizabeth Finch by Julian Barnes. Now, I adore Julian Barnes's writing from the, the bits I've read. I think I've maybe read four or five of his novels. And there is something about his ability to do character studies that I adore. So it, particularly in A Sense of an Ending, which is one of my favorite books, probably of all time, um, there's something so menacing and lingering about the way that characters misunderstand each other. We're told it all through this one man's perspective and uh, it's it's sort of really brilliantly done. And there are huge echoes of that in Elizabeth Finch. So in Elizabeth Finch, we're largely sort of hearing everything through the, the through a man who once knew Elizabeth Finch. She was a lecturer um, and she had sort of quite a big impact on him, you know, this, this, ma this, this man who's a student. And he sort of doesn't forget her, you know, years and years later, he's still thinking about her and their little lunch dates that they had and all these sorts of things. And the more he talks to other people around him, the more you realise that he's maybe got a really romanticised view of her. And actually other people in her life were like, oh yeah, that's Elizabeth, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, and so I thought it was really fascinating from the perspective of how we view memory, how we remember events and how that's almost always different for different people. I love writing about memory. Um, I just, I find it so fascinating. Julian Barnes writes about memory exceptionally, I think. My main thing that I will though add in is I have no idea on how to review Elizabeth Finch overall, because for a book that's only about 170 pages or so, I would say about half or maybe just under half um, or maybe even just over, hmm, is um, detailed descriptions of essentially almost like listening to a lecture. So it's a lot of history around religion and art and sort of battles and leaders and all these sorts of people. All that seems to be leading towards various ideas around who we are, the, the, the ways we represent memory and ourselves to the world. However, I will say, I don't think I was necessarily clever enough to get fully what was going on here. Um, it's a lot because it, it takes, there are such, you know, often passages that are sort of 30, 40 pages, it feels at least. Um, I listen to this as an audiobook, so I'm guessing 30, 40 pages. That, you know, there were passages of like an hour where I think I was only really listening to basically a lecture. Um, 
and it's something that Ian McEwan does in some of his more recent novels that kind of drives me a bit nuts. Like, I want subtlety. <laughs> I don't want you to be like, here is a big lecture about some important things, and this is going to be relevant to later. Um, and I'm not saying that Julian Barnes necessarily does that here. There is a large um, element of it, to, to some degree, for me, of like... It's, it's a tricky one for me to really review, because I don't know if there's something that I was missing that took, you know, some of what Elizabeth's lectures would have been about and really transformed them into now we, f now we better understand Elizabeth or whether we're meant to see those lectures as somebody having almost such a photographic memory of anything and everything that Elizabeth ever did or on his reading or, or anything else. So I'm really torn because this is sort of some absolutely fantastic character work and character study that is part of the reason I adore Julian Barnes. And then this bit that I just found really took away from the main story for me because I, I wanted to get back to Elizabeth. She was so fascinating and our narrator's inability to fully grasp who she was and full, you know, he almost seemed to want to possess her and his inability to do so feels so central to the book. Um, and then to keep being distracted by that, uh, from that, by these sort of lengthy descriptions, I found quite off-putting. But I can also see how, if if you sort of were following through there, and there was a key point, and how it connected back into the novel, that would really amplify something. I just didn't need that. I would have much preferred a one hundred page book that was just a focused character study um, and sort of descent into um, a sort of panic you know, as this character went. So really difficult for me to, to pin down. Um, and I'd be really keen to hear from people who really loved it or really hated it to see where that, why that was as well for the same reason. Next up, um, the book I mentioned just a moment ago as well, uh, Keeping the House by Tisha Shin. Um, and this is, uh, I absolutely adored this. I thought this was so fun. It's a book that I kept on like, I kept on hearing about through a few prizes and just like people generally talking about, um, and I was like, okay, let's just give this a shot because I sort of found an audiobook for it. And I really loved it. It's essentially it's about sort of Turkish, um, Turkish Cypriot um, people in the UK, largely in, 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 in London. Um, this sort of set of families, um, and particularly we hear from a couple of different people. And it's essentially them just sort of existing, firstly, in London and having a little community around them, um, doing sort of basic things like working, um, and, you know, just sort of having a family and all, like, kind of interacting with each other. And that that was sort of the beginning bit of the book, which I found really amazing because it um, it felt... It was so kind of captivating to me because I knew... I recognised that voice almost. Like, this feels like the London I know, um, whilst also being an outsider to it, if that makes sense. Sort of not being part of, like, a Turkey Cypriot community in London, but also, like, it's all told in this very, like, London vernacular. Um, and, like, South London, it feels as well, even though I don't think it's actually in South London. But anyway, um, and uh, it, it, that felt a little bit like home. Like, I know these people. This is really great. It's really sort of warm and, like, you're really brought into these worlds of this sort of, like, understanding the little sillinesses between characters, you know, the little relationships and everything that goes on. Then it sort of slowly moves into the story of how um, one of the sort of businesses that is around is smuggling drugs inside cabbages. Um, and uh, there's this whole, like, really quite funny passage, I think, of sort of talking about how, like, previously there were people who were trying to smuggle drugs in cabbages, but they got it all wrong because, like, they, like, didn't really think about the structural integrity of the cabbage. And so as a result, if someone leaned on it, you'd be like, oh, no, this is not a proper cabbage. I'm speaking a lot more about cabbages in this wrap-up than I ever thought I would be. Uh, and there's this really funny passage just talking about how they're like, yeah, yeah, we're going to do this. And also, you know, thinking about when, like, cabbages are used in food um, and sort of, like, how they might be able to do, like, little wraps of, like, to hide the drugs and make it seem a little bit more authentic and kind of get away with it. But it's just this really fun, interesting story. It's just, it's a kind of voice that we don't hear very often. And it's told really brilliantly. I just, I was really captivated by this story. I thought it was really fresh um, and really interesting. I thought the characters were really well fleshed out. Like I felt I knew them. Um, and I just, it was just a very successful book for me. Um, so yeah, that's that's what I was reading. So it's sort of been quite a weird reading week in that sense because I've had a couple of like these quite weighty 
books, you know, like both sort of in actual terms of weight. Uh, these two here, like something like Elizabeth Finch by Julian Barnes that has this sort of, you know, um, this sort of these lengthy academic conversations alongside this sort of slightly twisted potentially story in the in the center. And then, yeah, just sort of other other bits going on all around that. Uh, so that's what I've been reading this week. Um, I hope you have had a good reading week too. And uh, I look forward to hearing what you've been reading. Um, please do let me know if you've read any of these other books and have similar thoughts, particularly on Keeping the House or uh, Elizabeth Finch, because I'm really desperate to talk to people about them because I, yeah, for different reasons, but I, I think they're kind of quite fun. Anyway, I've been Bob the Booker talking about what I read this week. Take care and speak to you all soon. Bye-bye.